Well, it's good to be back with you and to be sharing here on WZOB this week uh, for thoughts for today. And this is Brother Mike from Ruhama Baptist Church. And um, if you don't have a church home, we'd love to, to love to have you come and visit us in Dogtown, Alabama. What a great place to, uh, to, to be able to serve the Lord. The Lord's given us a good ministry there, and we're thankful that he's opened this door for us to serve. Uh, after years uh, out, out of the country, living out of the country, then the Lord led us back to our hometown area, and we've been able to serve now for four years at Ruhema Baptist Church. It's four and a half now. And so what, what a blessing. The people are kind, and the fellowship is, uh, is sweet and solid, and uh, there's a great vision for uh, ministry and uh, outreach and, and also missions uh, as a part of this church. And so we're just thankful for, for that. And if you'd like to come and visit, we'd love to have you. Uh, our normal service time, of course, is 1045 on Sunday morning. The music starts and the service will start officially at 11 uh, on Sunday. So what a blessing. We do have a Bible study periodically and on uh, Sunday evening uh, at 6 p.m. And uh, during the school year, we have Wednesday night services uh, for kids and youth and also adults that uh, we have then. Also in the, in the church ministry, there's um, what's called the Ministry Training Institute. And we're preparing to start that again. Uh, in uh, August the 20th, and uh, this is in conjunction with Samford University, and uh, we have two, two instructors there. Um, I, I'm one of the instructors, and also uh, Brother Jacob Daniels from uh, Ider Baptist Church comes all the way to Ruhema to help us, and he'll be teaching this next course. We have eight weeks on on. Uh, uh, Tuesday nights, and uh, the course name is The Life and Ministry of Jesus Christ. And what a blessing. I think it's going to be a great course starting on the 20th. If you're, if you're interested, you'd like to more information, then uh, wh why don't you go to my email uh, and send, send to call on the Lord at hotmail.com. C-A-L-L-O-N-T-H-E-L-O-R-D at hotmail.com and just send a question if you would like more information about the ministry training there. And you don't have to be a member of our church or anything like that to attend uh, on Tuesday nights between 6 and 9 p.m. and uh, to take advantage of courses that are offered through uh, Sanford University Ministry Extension Program. And I did this when I first uh, started ministry and have never regretted it. And it's been a big blessing. And so we're trying to give back what we've received and the benefit we've received from that ministry. So that's on Tuesday nights. And also on Thursdays, we have uh, a release time Bible program uh, that's uh, with the kids from Ruhema School, uh, junior high school. And also during on Thursday, I teach some guitar classes and uh, at the church. So anyway, these kind of things are available at Ruhema Baptist Church. And you're certainly um, invited to uh, inquire about these and see if there's any uh, of the ministry, any part of the ministry that might be a blessing to you, an encouragement or something that maybe you need uh, in your life right now. So anyway, that's kind of what's happening and we just want the Lord's blessing and we desire you to pray for us that God would use this as a great uh, ministry in this community and ultimately around the world. And so we're, we're uh, thankful for that privilege. Well, we've been teaching on uh, the Lord's Prayer and we did the introduction to the Lord's Prayer in Matthew 6 uh, in the last session and in this session I'd like to get right into the Lord's Prayer itself so let me let me read this for you in Matthew 6 it's Matthew's account of the Lord's Prayer and he said in this manner therefore 
pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil, from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Lord, I'm asking you to help us now as we share your word with these dear listeners today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, the Lord's Prayer, you know, is given like a basic outline. Uh, Jesus' disciples wanted him to teach them to pray like John the Baptist's disciples had taught his uh, followers. And, and so here Jesus gives a, a basic outline and example of prayer that's uh, offered for his disciples. And it's, you know, it's taken for granted in the Bible that uh, God's people will pray. And in the beginning of this text, uh, in actually verse 5, the introduction to this text, Jesus said, when you pray, you should not be like the hypocrites, uh, for they love to pray. So he said, when you pray. So there, there's that expectation that God's people pray. Uh, the scripture says, whoever will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So there's, a, there's that expectation that God's people will pray. The very beginning of the Christian life is, is talking to the Lord in prayer, calling upon the name of the Lord. And so these, these are um, uh, a de definite truth. That, you know, the Lord's Prayer is wonderful to recite. Occasionally we do that in our church. We'll recite the Lord's Prayer in many of churches across the world and, and uh, recite the Lord's Prayer, some of them every Sunday in their service. And there's definitely not anything wrong with doing that. And I know during the, during the Reformation days that uh, uh, in, in secret, the Lord's Prayer was taught to children so they might be able to memorize God's Word and memorize uh, the Lord's Prayer. And something as important as praying, and we definitely would need to have that information or that knowledge of how Jesus would have us to pray. You know, it's, it's even uh, greater uh, when we learn to walk in the Spirit and uh, have an attitude that's contained in this model prayer. And I think that's the most important. And so I just want to look at a couple of uh, introductory uh, ideas to the prayer in, in reference to who is God. Because Jesus said, when you pray, you pray our Father. You know, God is to be addressed as Father. And in the gospel, Jesus used this term over and over and over again uh, related to who is God. God is our Father. And, you know, that, that affects how we think about life, too, but especially how we think about God and His nature and what He's like. You know, Paul the Apostle brought up in, uh, in a couple of different passages, actually. I'll, I'll look at them uh, first at Ephesians chapter 4, he said this, and it's uh, verse 6. He said, There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called in the one hope of your calling. This is Ephesians 4, verse 5. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Verse 6, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all, and in you all. And so he's speaking of God as Father. So Paul definitely believed that. He uh, promoted it. He preached it in uh, his letter to the Corinthians. I was going to look that up. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 8. And let me get it in front of me. Chapter 8 and verse 6. Uh, speaking of God. Now l listen to what it says. Yet for us, okay, now in the context of a world that's full of idols, 
let, let me read the context because he says, Therefore concerning the eating of things offered to idols, we know that an idol is nothing in the world and that there is no other God but one. So he speak, Paul was speaking to those that had a, a, what, a polytheistic view, many gods, um, and, and he was speaking to those that were in a culture and an environment where there were idols everywhere. And Paul says, even if there, there are so-called gods, whether in heaven or on earth, as there are many gods and many lords, yet, and I think he means there, there are those that claim, you know, there's a teaching that there's many gods and many lords. Yet for us, there is one God and the Father. There is one God, the Father, of whom are all things, Creator, we for him and one Lord Jesus Christ through whom are all things and through whom we live. In both cases, Paul the Apostle spoke of God as the Father. Jesus taught that when we make prayer, we are to make prayer toward and to the heavenly Father. Our Father which art in heaven. Our heavenly Father. <clears throat> Prayer is to be made also to the personal God. He's not only God up there, he's God here with us. So when we pray, we say our Father. So we have an individual God in that he is my God. But we also have the corporate idea that he's our Father. And so that we are those that believe that God is our Father. We are those that worship God as our Father. We are those that believe that, that God is the Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We are those that are trusting and depending in, depending upon God, our Creator, our Lord and King. You know, prayer is to only be made to the true God. That's what the scriptures teach. And so in, in, the, uh, in the context of uh, Corinth, there, was, there were multiple idols. And I've, like I mentioned earlier, uh, I saw the man in the temple. Well, that was a, a Buddhist temple. I saw that and I witnessed that from the outside looking in. And seeing he, he was in futility crying out to uh, whoever he thought was God. And you know, friends, that uh, we're, we're told that we're supposed to pray to only the true God. Not to saints or angels. And even, even in uh, groups that are professed Christian groups, there's this issue of praying to saints and praying to angels or praying to the Mother Mary. And so there's those issues that come up. But when the Bible says we should pray our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, holy is your name. And so we speak of God as to be worshipped, that he is holy and we are to give glory to him in worship. We are to give praise to him in song and in prayer. And in and, uh, attending to the word of God, listening to the word of God. And our ultimate meaning and purpose in life will come out of this. As we give glory to our God and Father. And we call upon him in prayer. It is this God that knows your every need. It is this God that has loved you so much that he sent his only son to be your savior and Lord to die on the cross for your sins. It is this God, your father, who cares so much that you can trust him, you can call on him, you can depend upon him. 
My friend, put your, won't you put your trust in him today? Won't you depend on him today? Won't you just bring everything before him today? He's your father. Call on his name. Father, now we come to you. We're thanking you for being our God. I pray for those that are listening. If any do not know you as their God and Father, that they might turn to you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord and in his name, amen.